Next up, we got the co-main event of the evening. We have Jan Kutalaba taking on Kennedy and Chuck Wu. Kennedy and Chuck Wu is 10 and 3 overall. 3 and 2 in his last five. He's coming off that win over Carl Roberson, which did break a two-fight skid. Jan Kutalaba, 16 and 8 overall. 3 1 and 1 in his last five. And he's coming off that submission loss to Johnny Walker. And this is an interesting fight because Kennedy and Chuck Wu is a pretty frustrating guy. He's he's the comeback kid. He has multiple fights in the UFC that he was definitely going to lose and then was able to come back, win by knockout. The dude hits very hard. He's a very good striker. Pretty well-rounded guy, but he can be low volume. And there's nothing more frustrating than watching a guy who you know is better, who's landing when he wants to land, and still not throwing. And that can be Kennedy at times. Jan Kutalaba is a grappler. He comes in big, heavy power in his hands, which he does have, but he's looking to grapple. He's a feast or famine guy. He's winning by stoppage or getting stopped. He'll put it on the line. I do think Kennedy and Chuck Wu wins this fight. I think he has so much power in his hands. I think he's got good enough takedown defense that it's not going to matter. And we just saw him in his last fight. He went from zero takedowns in eight UFC fights to five takedowns in his last one. I don't think he should be wrestling here, but we're just seeing the evolution of Kennedy and Chuck Wu. So uh, he's big. He hits hard. He's got good takedown defense. And Jan Kutalaba's only chance here is, is likely to get the takedown, which I don't think he does. So I'm loving Kennedy and Chuck Wu here. I absolutely think he gets this done. What do you think, Jackie Boy? Yeah, this is this is um, this seems like such an obvious Kennedy play that it almost feels like the almost like Ryan Span last week. Like it, it just seemed like and I know that you were you weren't as high on as as Reyes on everyone else. So you, hats off to you for sniffing out the Ryan Span angle on that one. But for me, I thought the Reyes was like the obvious play. And when I looked at this, I think Kennedy is the obvious play, as you mentioned. So withstand the the takedowns. We've seen Kutalaba be very chinny at times kind of be an idiot i mean there kutalaba to be honest is probably the better fighter of the two he's just like an absolute wild man an absolute idiot and can get knocked out so but in this fight it just it feels like this might be one of the weird times that kutalaba is able to find that weird finish or because as you mentioned kennedy is a hard dude to trust in his own right the way that he just kind of is low volume and so yeah this is one of those situations again i mean this is one of those weird cards guys where it's like Fuck, man. My pick is Kennedy for this fight, but if I'm looking at value and I'm looking for finishing ability, I might sprinkle something on the Kutalaba in like the first round, something like that. Something weird because I don't think Kennedy's a, you know necessarily a finisher, and if Kutalaba is able to get the takedowns, then something weird can happen because he is a pretty tenacious, ferocious dude. If he gets you down, you know, works to a mount position, TKO, when we've seen Kennedy kind of be that shell-up guy at times, which is not good against a guy like Kutalaba, so... I know I've been talking up Kutalaba in this breakdown, but my pick is Kennedy. He should be able to withstand the takedowns, maybe find the chin of Kutalaba, but this feels, feels like one of those weird, uh, feels like Kutalaba's due for something. I don't know, just one of those hunches, I guess. Uh, no, listen, I I, uh, I hear you, man. Nothing is more frustrating than, like I said, a, the, you're watching somebody with great hands and great power just not throw. I Low volume guys drive me absolutely nuts. And and if you're looking at the summary numbers here, he's not a low volume guy, right? If you're just looking at on average, he's landing 4.68 significant strikes. A lot of that had to do with the takedowns in his last fight. And if you watch his fights, you see the opportunities he doesn't take them. He has multiple fights in the UFC where he was literally losing and bang, there's that one punch to get it done. They finally, thank God, landed the big one and then didn't lose a decision. So I do like Kennedy and Chuck Wu to get this done. I think he hits too hard. I think he's too hard to take down. But yeah, low-volume guys can be a bit frustrating. What's the, uh, but what's the draft games on this? Oh, there you go. 8800 bucks. He's probably worth the 8800 bucks. Because if he wins, it will be by knockout. Because A, he can knock people out. And B, Kutalaba gets knocked out. Like it's, it's you know what I mean? It's like you mentioned the Ryan Span Reyes. I mean... Reyes was just coming off two flatline knockouts in a row, fighting a dude who hits like a Mack truck. This is a similar situation. Jan well, is Kutalaba coming off a submission loss. Back to back submissions, but yeah. But he's getting dropped. He's getting rocked. Like, no, it's not even. Just he's a chinny dude. I mean, anyone that wants to talk about. Because I, I think I mentioned that like in something 
maybe the Discord or something. I was talking about Kutalaba's chin, and somebody was like, well, he got submitted. He didn't even get knocked out in his last two fights. Like, if you think that Kutalaba can take a punch, like, I got a bridge to sell you in Brooklyn. <laughs> You've never been to Brooklyn. It would intimidate you. Uh, I don't I didn't take you to Brooklyn. No. I would have taken you couldn't over that, that town. I would have taken over that, that town. town. Yeah. Um, anyway, Kenny and Chuck, 8,800 bucks in DraftKings. He's probably worth it. He's probably worth the $8,800. Do you agree? I have to check. I have, I, Jesus Christ. I mean, there's, like you said, there's a lot of favorites on this card where it's just like things feel a little bit dicey. And we say that, and this is probably going to be the one where it's just chalk the entire way where every favorite wins. Um, but Jesus, I don't know. Probably, because he can't really trust Kutalaba. But at the same time, when he can't trust him, that's usually when those people fucking win their fights. Well, what's what's funny about that whole, you know, because inevitably, you know, every time we watch tape, we do breakdowns, we give our picks. There are cards where we're picking mostly favorites. There are cards where we're just all over the place, favorites and underdogs. You know, it's every card is completely different. Look at the fights objectively. But anytime we do a card where we're picking mostly favorites, Somebody's always in the comments, yeah, these guys are just picking favorites. And then what happened two weeks ago? 14 fights, 13 favorites won. It's just like, yeah. Like, first of all, they're favorites for a reason. People aren't just throwing darts at like they're favorites for a reason. Almost every time the favorite makes sense that they're a favorite, and we just find a reason to poke holes in and be like, you know, but this could happen. That's why but, I, that's why lock of the week is so ridiculous. That I won 10 in a row. Every single fighter was supposed to lose. Crazy. It's a, it's a I mean, it's a fucking joke now, but that was that was quite the I mean, that was quite the run. <laughs> Listen, I mean, it, it makes it even more. Over. It makes it even more crazy now when you see when I, I lose, I win, I lose two, I win, I lose two. I won ten in a fucking row. That is insane. That is insane. Yeah, I mean, I, listen, I'm with you. I agree. It's just, what's so funny is the people were obsessed with that streak, which I get. I get. You made a lot of people. If somebody did the math. If you if you doubled, you know, if you took all the money you want and put it on the next one, you have to look. It literally would have been a million dollars if you started with a hundred dollar bet. But they ran away very quickly the first time you missed one. As soon as you missed one, they, they were gone. I don't blame them. So it's funny. a joke now. It's an absolute joke. Well, Monkey the lava Patrick, lock of the week. Monkey Knife Vice Strike Line. This is another one that I am not touching because Kennedy can be low volume and he frankly doesn't need that much volume if he's landing clean on Jan Kutalaba. But if you want access to all of our bets, we have been absolutely killing it lately. Go to wewantpicks.com at the top, click become a member. It's only $10 a month. $10. 10. One decent month can pay for years worth of premium membership. And if you did $10 units, Jacob just gave you 20-something last weekend. I gave you a couple more. You're about at 30. That is literally almost three years with a premium membership covered by us. We on picks.com at the top click, become a member.